more of my story, guys, is I was, like I shared before, I was a pastor um, for 10 years. And honestly, I thought that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. I had a strong call, I thought, to that world and even started a church. Y'all, I wonder if I can pull it up here. I think the website's still out there. Here, let me see if I can find some stuff without fully doxing myself, which I, I probably can't. Although you can literally just Google me and figure out where I live and stuff. But yeah, I, I won't share. You can you can Google it. You can find it yourself. But I uh, I'll close this out. I I started like I started a church. We planted a church. And for those of you who don't know church terminology, it's very much like when I say I planted a church, think about entrepreneurship, right? So um, when I was super young, but me and my wife started a church in this small town uh, with just, just the two of us and just through leadership and outreach and reaching out to people, we grew it to a spot where it was you know self-sustaining. I was able to take a full-time salary, although not much from the church. But even at that time, guys, I was working on on average about three different jobs at the same time while doing all of that just because churches don't pay well, especially a church that you're just getting started. And the reason I started a church, because uh, it almost sounds cultish when I say it that way, but it wasn't it wasn't cultish in that way. I, I live in a rural community, and most churches in rural communities are very traditional, and most people just don't feel welcomed in them because if you don't dress a certain way, look look a certain way, talk a certain way, you don't fit in. So the church that we started very very much reached out to those on the margins of society and culture. Um, a lot of addiction, drug addiction, things like that are, are the, the kind of people who are attracted to the church, attracted to my leadership for good or for bad. But I wanted to be a church for people who have been rejected or hurt by the church in the past. And that's what it was. And uh, it was it was really cool, really fun for the most part. A lot of difficult stuff. You know, like I've sat down with people, uh, like one, one dark story, <laughs> not to get too dark, but like a mom um, who's struggling with with uh, alcohol addiction, with two young kids, got arrested and and then committed suicide. And uh, I had to walk through that. Had to do uh, like her funeral and everything. Uh, I've been in the rooms with people when they're dealing with very real death or when marriages are falling apart. So dark stuff. Uh, not all pastors get private jets. I never got a private jet. Like I shared before, like the most I made was $40,000 a year to be on call 24 seven and deal with really high, uh, high, tough, emotional stuff. I spent three years on the academic level, studying theology, philosophy, history, languages, Greek, Hebrew. I have a master's of divinity, which is just a master's of all, all of that stuff. So I spent a lot of time on it, a lot of money, a lot of resources. I really poured my heart into it. When we got into the COVID-19 pandemic, which I'm sure you've all heard about, the I so remember, I, I, I live in a rural community in South Dakota, which uh, that's about as hardcore uh, MAGA Republican Trump nation as you can get. And I'd, I'm not going to go into politics too much here, but I'm very much not that right. I don't I don't fit the hardcore Republican Trump era. And when it came to the COVID-19 pandemic, we did a few things. One is, well, we canceled services for a while. When we went back to having services, we only did it outside. But because I live in South Dakota, you can't be outside forever because eventually it's going to be negative 20 degrees out. So we eventually went to in-person services, but I required people to wear masks out of respect for those among us who are immunocompromised. And just me telling people to wear a mask to come to church led everyone to freaking lose their minds. Uh, like it was insane. Like the, the crazy things religious people said to me, like, I'm telling y'all, religious people are freaking insane. Most of the time, I would much rather hang out with people who are not religious. Religious people can be nuts when it comes to this stuff. But I'm um, asked people to wear masks. They lost their minds. They I, they called me some some crazy labels. We lost a bunch of people in the church, and I just saw the writing on the wall. There was no way this church is gonna be able to provide a salary for me. And honestly, I was just burnt out. I was exhausted. I was frustrated. I was pissed off. I was sick of religious people, and I didn't want to lead them anymore. And uh, I, like I shared before, I was a sole income provider for my family of four. My wife at that time, two really young kids. My kids are seven and four now. Then they were would have been four and w w not even one. My son would have just been born. 
And so like the reason my work output was so much getting my bachelor's degree and getting certs is guys, I had no other choice. I needed to provide for my family. I, if I continued in ministry, I was going to end up some statistic of some pastor who made a stupid decision and <laughs> did whatever, right? That's where I would have ended up. So I had no other choice but to grind it out uh, and get a degree and switch jobs. So that's why my work output in the beginning was so insane. I just had to uh, provide for my family. So that's why I am no longer a pastor and uh, probably will 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 never be. But I do actually preach occasionally. So I'm still, I still love Jesus. I'm still a follower of Jesus. I try not to push my faith on people, uh, especially on my stream. Like, I don't care what you believe, whether you're atheist, agnostic, whatever it is, you are welcome here. Would love to talk to you. Um, I would say almost all my friends are not Christians. I have very few friends who are even Christians, but me personally, I have found uh, the, the Jesus of the Bible, the first century rabbi who flipped tables and called out injustice in the religious leaders to be, to, to be someone worthy of my, my following and my study. But yeah, I agree with you, Gildorth. Religion and science can work hand in hand, absolutely. Like I shared before, I am not, I am not one of those freaking hardcore Republican using Jesus as a means to prop up my politics. I can't freaking stand that. And I call it out every chance I get, but I'm very much in the minority, uh, where I live in, in my philosophy, but yeah, I don't want to talk more, uh, more religion. Cause I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but the real juice is about kindness and empathy. Yeah, dude. I mean like guys, honestly, Honestly, even if you don't, even if you're not religious, I would encourage you read, read about Jesus, not from the preacher you saw on TV, but like read, read the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the new Testament, not even from a religious perspective, if you don't want to, but just like, look at the person of Jesus. I think it was, uh, uh Mahatma, I can't say his name, the Indian leader, Mahatma. Mahatma Gandhi, am I saying that right? Gandhi, I'm just gonna go Gandhi because I can't say his first name. I think it was Gandhi here. Let me see if I can get the quote right. If I can find it. I can't find it. Y'all can find it up. But Gandhi said something along these lines. Uh, he read the gospels, right? So his whole movement was based on the teachings of Jesus, even though he wasn't a Christian. But he said like, yo, Christians, the reason I'm not a follower of Jesus is because the Christians who claim to follow Jesus look nothing like Jesus. They look nothing like this first century radical rabbi who calls out injustice in the religious elite and seeks to befriend the oppressed and the marginalized and, and the sinner, right? Those are the people Jesus came for, not the religious elite. Jesus was not crucified for being a good teacher. He was crucified for calling out injustice and proclaiming himself to be something that pissed off the religious people. So like, even if you're not religious, just, just read about Jesus, dude. Jesus was and is, is, and from my perspective, amazing. But even from a non-religious perspective, his teachings have literally transformed the world. The greatest religious leader teacher that ever has existed, in, in my humble, humble opinion. All right. That's that's enough preaching to you guys. I try not to get too uh too preachy on stream, but that ended up going there. Let me see what other questions we have. <clears throat> 